let's get into functions and procedures. Now, we've used functions multiple times in this series so far. We've used int before, and int takes an input of string, converts it to an integer, and returns the result. So we know when we've supplied one, for example, it's converted it to the number of one or integer one. So if we look closely at this, the function has a name, which is int, and it also opens brackets and supports a parameter or argument, and we can supply something in here. So let's create our own function to understand this a little bit more. We start with the keyword def. Def, or short for define, means that we are telling Python we are starting to define a function. And let's call our function add, because we want to add two values together. Okay, you can see it's highlighted yellow. We open and close brackets, and we are putting in a colon. Now, we know to, to add, we need to add two values. That means we want to take two values as input. So we can call it whatever you like. To be clear, I'm just going to put value one, comma, value two. Okay. Now, you can see if I hit enter, it takes me in, but it's tabbed in. Okay. It's tabbed into the function. So we want to write here our calculation. So result value one plus value two. Very simple. We've seen operators before to do this calculation, and it will give us a result. Finally, we would like to return this result. We have a new keyword here called return, and all it does is it takes this variable, this data, and it returns it to the calling code. Now, let me show you what I mean by calling code. If we do add, which is the name of our function, we are now calling calling the function and we said five for our first value or and two for our second so now this line five here is the calling code for our function add so that means that this result will be returned to line five okay so we had result here we will have the result of five plus two so if we then printed result to the screen, you can see we have seven, which is absolutely fine. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more efficient. We don't need to store this variable to see the result. We can just print add. And if we run that code again, you can see we have seven still, which is good. And now to make it better, you see, again, we don't need to store a variable. There's no need to create variables if you don't have to absolutely have it. So we can remove this return, and we can just return the result here. We're returning the result of this calculation. So now, what happens if we run this code again? We still get 7. Okay. Now here's the real power of functions, because you might be thinking, what's the point in doing all of this? You could just do the calculation here and just print it to the screen with five and two. Now, what if we did this? Three, one, four, two. So we have now called our function multiple times with different values, and we're printing the result to the screen. If we run it, you can see we have seven, four, and six. So what we've done here is we've successfully reused this line of code, this calculation, multiple times. And all we needed to do was call our function and give it the two values. Now, what are the benefits of doing this? Number one is that we're reusing code. Okay, so we don't have to write the same thing over and over again. And when our functions become bigger, you'll notice that what if we make a mistake Okay, so say our function's multiple lines and we, we notice there's a mistake or a bug in our code. Instead of having those lines repeated five, three, whatever amount of times, we have it just here in the one place and we can make the fix there. If we didn't, then we'll have to make that fix five, three times in all the different places and it can become complicated. Another benefit is readability. It makes our code easier to read. So we have a function here. It's called add. We know it does add. 
Now, when we come down here, all we have to do is add. We're like, okay, cool. It's going to add value one and two. It's going to add. We don't have to have the same complicated function code over and over again. Okay, so that's a function. It's defined by, it takes an input, it does some sort of calculation or processing, and it returns the result to the calling code. That is a function in its most simplest form. So pause the video, see if you can create your own function, and try something different to what we've done so far, and see if you can get it working. If you can, let's take a look at procedures. So if that is a function, what is a procedure? Now the difference between a function and procedure is a function will take an input, do some processing, and then return a result. But with a procedure, it can take input, it will do some processing or some sort of instructions, but it will not return a result to the calling code. Now in Python, we can define a procedure in the same way we would define a function. We will have our def as our keyword, our name for our procedure, and it can accept input or parameters. And then we'll do whatever processing we want, but we will not use the keyword return. Okay. So down here, you can see that we have, we do some calculations by using this method or function, sorry, and we're printing it to the screen. So we could say def print results and we can cut all of this paste it here and then we can do print results okay so now you can see we have two we have a function and we have a procedure which does not return anything to the calling code you can see we're not doing anything here we're just saying print results and if we run this it prints our results just as we had before so that is a function, and this is a procedure. Okay, so one other important thing to note about both of these things in Python is that if we had to do this and run the code, it'll break, and it'll say indentation error expected an indented block. So this is a block of code and expects to be indented inside a definition, a function, or a procedure. So that's very important. If we did that and ran it, it still runs. So it has to be indented by at least one space or one tab space. So that's very important. It's the same for functions.